Shut up, listen up, everybody, what up? Gonna put it in the podcast, what's, what's up? We talk, we laugh, we sing, we dance, we will do anything if you give us a chance. We'll play one time, it'll help us out. All truth, no lies, no, it's never a doubt. If you like rants, tirades, and honest opinions, we shoot from the hip and we'll hear with precision. Give us one chance to play a Pinga Bros podcast. Okay, hey, and welcome to another episode of Los Pinga Bros. This is uh, Mr. Pinga Zombie, and I am here with Mr. guest... Mr. Asak. Hey, everybody. Um... So this is just going to be another catch-up episode, just see uh, where we're at, where we're watching. Uh, thanks for listening in, if you are, and if you're not, you better start listening. Um, so this is where we just talk about what we've been watching, what we've been doing. I'll let my guest talk to me about that a little bit. Uh, so what have you been watching, Mr. Aztec, recently? Or anything that stands out? Any news that you want to talk about? So um, it's been a, I feel like a very exciting month. Uh, been catching up on a whole bunch of uh, old stuff that's kind of been out already, um, as well as some stuff that just came out. Specifically, um, we watched Barbarian, which was out, I was late to the game for uh, I think a few weeks. That was amazing. And then the most relevant one uh, was Black Adam, which is also uh, awesome. And um, I think we'll dive into either or. Oh yeah, I mean, there's there's no rhyme and reason to this podcast, so you can dive in, dive out, do whatever we want. Um, yeah, uh, I've been, I guess since the last time we've spoken on this podcast, or I've spoken on this podcast, a lot's happened. World Cup's going on right now. Um, Kevin Conroy passed away. Uh, he's the fucking best Batman um, ever, probably. Uh, I mean, I love Michael Keaton, but Kevin Conroy's the best. Jason David Frank, the Green Power Ranger, also passed away. Um, it just sucks. Um, but yeah, I've been watching. I saw Barbarian. Uh, I saw it with Mr. Aztec. Uh, I also saw it with my brother um, Armando. And then we watched Black Adam and uh, Black Panther as well. Those are probably the standouts um, or the most viable ones that we we watched recently. Um, so what you think about Barbarian in horror genre or anything stand out? What would you like about it? Did you not like it? Rank 1 to 10. Uh, for Barbarian, I want to give it a 9, scratch, and 10. I feel like it was very refreshing uh, nice. from the horror genre. Um, also, it's, it wasn't very... It, it, you couldn't tell what they were going to do next, which is always appreciated. Um, Again, refreshing to see. Um, just the way it was filmed, it's, it was done very nicely. Um, oh, you can feel free to spoil it too. I, these guys haven't watched it. So okay, I, I was worried about the spoilers. A, yeah, this spoiler-filled review. Awesome. So, I mean, just like off the bat, like they, they don't tell you, or even if you watch the trailer, they don't tell you what the bad guy is or who the bad guy is. It's just a whole bunch of crazy stuff happening. Right, uh, in the very beginning, in the introduction, where I guess the main uh, character uh, meets the person that's staying at the Airbnb, um, the movie or the director and the writer want you to believe that that's 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 a, that's a bad person, right? That's yeah, bad guy. it's Bill Bill Skarsgård, the guy who played Pennywise. So you're like, of course he's the bad guy, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, little do you know that. He's actually not, um, and then it just goes down from there, which is uh, amazing. I feel like it's uh, kind of like a, almost like a labyrinth, or like or uh, maze, same thing. But that you go from like getting worse, it gets worse, it gets worse. Um, so pretty awesome. Yeah, that that's um, yeah, like you saying that. There's very few movies that do that, and I think. It really makes or breaks the movie when it does it. Like, you could do it and you can mess it up and it's a terrible movie. Or you can do it and it works and it's great. Um, like, the the ones I can think of are, like, Tusk and... With Justin Long, who's also in Tusk and Barbarian. Um, and the other one I can think of is, like, Wolf Creek. Um, in those movies, like, you follow a protagonist and you're like, Okay, this is the story. This is the story that's set up. I'm going to follow these characters and that's what the movie's going to be. And then, or Psycho is another one, um, where you're following this female lead and you're like, okay, so this is going to be the, ne- the main character. And then what do they, they kill her off or they kill off one of the main characters and it's like, yo, what, what's the rest of the movie going to be? And then you just interject a new character 
and you find out that the story is actually about this character. This is the main character. Um, I think Tusk does that to its detriment. I think Tusk is a fantastic movie until you interject Johnny Depp into that movie. And then it becomes a comedy and then it's, it just sucks. Um, that, that one doesn't do it right. Wolf Creek, you follow a character and then this character gets killed off. And then you just follow a new character and it just like, how are you gonna, you usually don't have enough time to feel for this next character, but they make it work in Barbarian. Justin Long doesn't come on until like halfway through the film. And I, I, I mean, I don't know if it's just because it's Justin Long, but I love that character. Like, I think he's a really good character. I think he's super grounded. He feels like a real person. Um, but yeah, I think, I think Barbarian pulls it off real well. I thought Justin Long did come on in the beginning just to give like, a little backstory of what's happening in his life that I guess he's getting sued or um, or they're pressing charges against him for like the supposedly supposedly like rape charges. But that's like 30 minutes in. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Because it starts off with uh, the chick pulling up to the Airbnb and we just follow her and Bill Skarsgård for the next 30 minutes. And then as soon as Bill Skarsgård's like, we gotta get the fuck out of here! And then it cuts. Oh, that's right. That's and then right. it goes to Justin Long. Yeah, that, that that is right. Which is really cool to do because it's like you pause the movie, which creates suspense, and you go do another story, like a side story, yeah. just to come back to this one. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So that's really cool because it's filmed like like many other things, but like in stages, you know, like you open the door to the Airbnb, you open the door to the basement. The basement has a secret door. That secret door has another secret door, and it gets keeps getting worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, I mean, it's it's the it's the little things that that kind of just add to the awesomeness and like the scariness to to that horror film. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I agreed. Like I, I think because you also don't know when any of this is taking place. Like it doesn't show like a a title card or whatever. This is like two weeks before, or, like forty eight hours later. Um, this, the instant where you think Bill Skarsgård is a bad guy and he's luring this lady down into the labyrinth, you find out that there's this monster. It's a monster movie. Like, out of nowhere, it becomes a monster movie. And then as soon as you want to know what's going on with that monster, it cuts and then it goes to Justin Long's character. And you don't know when this is taking place. You don't know if he was at the Airbnb before them or after them until a little later on in the movie. And then it cuts again and it shows the character, um, I forget his name, but he played Joe Chill in the Batman Begins movie. Um, we see his character, and you just see the whole landscape of the film change again, where everything's bright, it's filmed like, it looks older because everything's cleaner, and then you start seeing the neighborhood, and it has to be taking, in the, uh, taking place in the past, and then we follow his character, and we find out that he's been kidnapping women and like, there's a there's a serial killer in this house that nobody knows about, and that's even scarier too. Like, they they come and they ask him like, or you because everyone's leaving that neighborhood, and they ask him like, or do you plan on leaving soon? And he's like, I'm not leaving because he has women, like, imprisoned in there. Right. I, and it just like it's crazy. Um, it's it's insane. Um. He made a, like, you'd have to believe that he created that whole labyrinth, too, because who built that area? Justin Long owns that house, and he had no idea someone was down there. Someone was living right under him. Which is very scary, because the amount of times that we've Airbnb. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, either way, when I get to an Airbnb, I don't know about everyone else uh, hearing this, is like, I check every room, you know, of every corner. Make sure everything, like the windows are locked, doors are locked right behind me, you know, making sure that no one else is inside the house. But I mean, again, you'll never know when there's a secret compartment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. Yeah, it's, it's legitimately terrifying. And I think this does a great job for like new horror, I guess. Because I, I feel like, and I, there's no like this to anyone, but I feel like, Everyone always has this elevated horror. Like, things need to be elevated, which I think is a terrible term. Uh, And everyone suggests that, like, Jordan Peele or Ari Aster and Robert Eggers, like, Hereditary, Midsummer, they're elevated horror. I like those movies. Um, But I think just elevated horror just sounds like you're pompous or, like, bougie. Like, oh, we 
we celebrate elevated horror and we only drink wine. Like, I think that's ridiculous. Um, horror is horror. Like, if it strikes a chord with you, if you react, that's horror. It doesn't have to be elevated. It doesn't have to be de-escalated. That doesn't have to be anything. It's, it's horror, and that's what it is. And I think this does a good job of bringing horror in the modern age where it's not elevated horror where people would it's it's a monster movie. I mean it's it's a monster movie for this day and age. Airbnb is a fairly new thing and they made it scary. Like yeah, you never know what what would happen if someone else is living or if someone else has booked the same Airbnb as you. It could be a mistake, but how do you deal with it? Yeah, um, it, it was very simple. The idea was very simple, but executed um fairly great. Um, and then you don't, you, I feel like you don't see that, uh, too often. And then when you do come across it, it's, uh, very gratifying. So, yeah, I, I dig it. Um, I think this year also, um, this is a, go, a little off topic. Um, I think this year has been a really good year for horror movies. Um, I mean, I think Barbarian was great. Um, X came out this year with Jenna Ortega and so did, uh, Pearl. And I think those are, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to see either of those. Uh, I I highly recommend them. Uh, I I don't know if Scream came out this year. Maybe it came out last year. Uh, But Scream was also great. I just feel like there's a a horror renaissance coming out about, and I'm very excited for that. That's my favorite genre, so it's it's cool to see a lot of good horror coming out. Um, Smile was pretty... Oh, I haven't seen that. I've seen it, and I mean, it wasn't as good as Barbarian, but it was very close in, like, I guess ideas. Uh, if you watched it, you know what that means. If you haven't, uh, take some time and give it a watch. Uh, there are a few complaints about it, but I won't give any spoilers. Um, one of the things that they did for advertising um, was that they had, I think it was the main character, the, the actress, uh, they had her go to like random like events like baseball games mm. and they just had her like smile very creep like creepy yeah and people were like some people that already saw the trailer like understood yeah uh, which is cool and then other people that didn't know anything about it was very creepy <laughs> that's cool or yeah. random or weird you know but uh that was interesting so uh the movies are um it was like a seven for me out of ten um so that's good. I mean, to watch. I'm so oh, that that's good to hear you say that because that when I saw that trailer, I was like, this might be good or it might be just one of those like bad horror movies that are just trying to cash in. But yeah. if you're saying it's good, I'm I'm down to watch it. That that's good to hear. Um, on on the plus or on on the negative side of horror, Halloween ends. <laughs> My God, <laughs> I did, you watched that, right? I did watch that. What what did you think of it before I tear it into? Um, I feel like I'm very biased because watching Michael Myers do his thing is always great to me. Um, but if I wasn't a Michael Myers fan, I could see why um, it's bad. I did not like this last one, definitely. Um, but I did enjoy the previous two of the of the same trilogy. So see, I. I I actually will say the reverse of that. I think this one was better than Halloween Kills. And Halloween Kills... I think Halloween Kills is just terrible. Um, I think there's some good scenes in it. Like, what you, you and Christian always talk about Big John, Little John. I like that. I like that scene. That's a pretty... It's a pretty fun time. Um, I think that... I can't think of any other scene. Oh, the beginning. I think the intro of that is good because they make it look like old school... 1970s Haddonfield yeah. and it looks great it's it's a uh, that film it looks like a film it looks great and then they did whatever and then they just shat on themselves afterwards because man that that whole movie runs like a clip show where they just show a bunch of of edit edited scenes from the previous film like we didn't forget what happened in the one right before like we did not forget <laughs> And it half of the movie feels like it's that, and then half of the the rest, the, the other half of that movie is, evil dies tonight, and it's the dumbest thing. They, well, they did the same thing with the the newest one where they 
played multiple clips again. Again, yeah, it runs like a clip show again. Uh, yeah, you're right. And I think there's just so many Halloween movies that people that they were scared that they might mix other Halloweens with and like just confuse the crap out of people. You know what was absolutely confusing about this one is that Michael Myers doesn't come out in this movie. Um, he comes out more than halfway through the movie. I, I think you spend like an hour and ten minutes and he doesn't even show up. Um, it, we follow this other kid who, who accidentally killed the person he was babysitting, which is one of the best intros I've seen in a horror movie in a long time as well. That shit was hilarious. He just kicks open the door, <laughs> knocks that kid down like six flights of stairs. Uh, that, that was insane. Uh, but it was, you know, I, I told my brother, this wouldn't be a bad movie if it was, or it wouldn't be a bad, I think it's a perfect startup to a show. If this was on Netflix and it was called Hattonfield and it was, it, it took place in the realm or in the world of Michael Myers, but it wasn't a Michael Myers show. I think it'd be great. Like, you know what? It's Haddonfield. It's a, it's a fictional town in Illinois. Maybe there's more things besides Michael Myers that are, that's wrong with that town. Maybe there's other supernatural entities that's wrong with it. So, I guess, like, because we follow this one kid, and then he ends up being, like, the spiritual successor of Michael Myers or something. Like, we find Michael Myers in a sewer, and he's weak. And this guy comes over and basically beats the hell out of him, right? And he takes Michael Myers' mask away. And Michael Myers just looks like a chump throughout. And this is the last one. This is his last movie. If this was part three in a seven-part series, okay, sure. You're building towards something. But it's the last one. And we start following a new character. I think, at least for me, and I'm a big Michael Myers fan, I wanted Michael Myers to go all out. I wanted to see him kill as many. It was his last hurrah. I want him to see him. I want to see him kill every as many people as he can, and see Jamie Lee Curtis hunting him down. He killed her daughter. Like I want to see her going after him, hunting him, making sure he doesn't kill anyone ever again. He killed a whole town in the one before this, and then they kind of just said, "Oh, well, he kind of walked away, so we're fine with it." Like, where's the urgency? Where's any of it? She becomes a writer. And then she has like a five minute fight scene with him at the end. And by that point, of course she should beat him. I mean, this whip beat him up. Of course she can beat him up. Right. So it, I think it just like, it detracts from, from Michael Myers as, a, as an icon of horror. Like he doesn't seem like a threatening, he's not the shape. He's not the boogeyman. He's just a guy who got beat up and is living in the sewers. I think they were trying to break away from those chains and like take a different route. Like I agree, you know, like Mike Myers should kill, but I don't think that they, that's exactly what they wanted to do. Um, and back to your point, like making a series, that would be awesome, right? Um, because one of the, I guess one of the topics uh, from that last movie was that Hanfield was broken down because of all the events that had happened in the past. It was a broken city. And they feel they felt like every other bad thing that had happened previously or after that time was that you know they were cursed or they would blame Michael Myers for it mm -hmm. or the evil entity. Um, so I feel like if they made that that series, they could you know make a series about like all the crazies in yeah you know and not even mention Michael Myers. They could mention him, but not even show him, right? Not yeah, make it about them. Uh, which would be really cool to see and maybe include uh, Lori and some of them, but maybe not not too much as well. But that'd be pretty cool to see. I mean, it, it just, I mean, like, I'm, I'm all fine with them breaking away from the chains, but if it's the last one, like, you expect the conclusion, you know? Like, I'm not going into um, Avengers Endgame and being like, oh, you know, they're going to make a, a whole movie about... The, the startup to the scroll invasion. Like, I'm not expe I'm expecting them to fight Thanos. I'm expecting an army to fight Thanos. And that's what they gave us. I mean, they gave us the fight at the end. They gave us the Trinity versus Thanos. I wanted that fight with Laurie Strode versus Michael Myers. I wanted that because it's the last one. Until, you know, they rebooted, of course. But 
this is supposed to be the last one. This is what people want. And that's why I think they 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 did bad on not giving us that. And I I don't know what they I don't know if they think Illinois is in New Jersey or something. But you remember those kids that are punking the guy and like, hey yo, you Michael Myers, what's going on? Like what what? No one in Illinois talks like that. That dude's from the Bronx. I don't know. Why are they here? Um, it, it makes no sense. Like, they, they didn't know what they were doing. And, again, if, if this was, one, like, a middle movie or a series, I think it would have made more sense. But I think as the final film, it, it doesn't work. And Danny McBride, Danny McBride also helped write it. I mean, it was his idea to, like, bring it back for this trilogy or whatever. I think there's a lot of scenes in that that you look at it and it's like, oh, that's a Danny McBride scene. Like, that, he wanted to say that. And it works if Danny McBride says it because he's already a character actor and you know who he is. But when someone else is spouting his lines, it's kind of like, it doesn't work. I mean, Laurie said a few of them and it felt like Laurie would say that, but also you can tell that Danny McBride, like, when she was mentioning uh, her granddaughter dating, and then she encouraged her to go all out and go tits in or something. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. And okay, yeah. That well, had Danny McBride's name all over it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's just because Jamie Lee Curtis is a great actress. Again, not used at all. In the... Will Patton, another great actor, the sheriff. Right. Dude's great. Yeah. And they don't let him do anything in the movie. Like, blitz all night. That dude is the best. And they didn't let him do anything in there. I... It just oh, and then another thing I hated about that was, they blame Lori Strode throughout the entire movie, um, like the random civilians. They're like, it's your fault that this happened. What? She was a babysitter that fought Michael Myers and survived. How is it her fault? Oh, you should have killed him. You guys should have killed him. There was a whole town after him in part two, and they didn't kill him. No one thought. You know what? Maybe we should just shoot him in the head. And get it done one. No, let's hit him with bats on his back. What are you guys doing? Yeah. Um, and then their whole, like, is it supernatural? Is it not supernatural? He gets stronger when he kills. So is he supernatural or is he not? Like, they didn't come up with... They, 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 didn't, they didn't stick to their guns. They said, let's just make it ambiguous. And that's well, at least for the first two. And for the third one, they kind of were like, okay, let's go with supernatural. Super, yeah, and that's... Like, they should have had it more planned, but... Oh, that's, that's enough Halloween. <laughs> um, but okay, so Barbarian, good movie. Awesome movie. Awesome movie. Filmed great. I think acted to perfection. Um, it was good to see Justin Long. Yeah, he's always fun. Like, he's always... I feel like he's always the same character, and that's okay, you know? See, I, I think... You know, I, I was thinking... I was talking uh, to my brother about that. Like, maybe he is, or maybe he's not. And I was thinking about, like... But then you see him in, like, Dodgeball. He's such a, like, nice, like, hey, I'm the cool little, like, I'm, I'm a kid and I'm kind of picked on, but, like, I'm here to make everybody have a good day. And, like, he's just a really genuine kid in there. And then you see him in Tusk and in Barbarian, and he's not. He's a douchebag. Like, he is a, he's bad. And, like, you know, again, spoiler filled, but in Barbarian, you know, he's accused of molesting or raping someone right right and and then they, i think they did and this is one of the best written scenes i think in that movie is he's talking with his friend at a bar and i think it's done really well like he's drunk and so is his friend and then his friend's like yeah, yeah, yeah okay so like but did you rape her though like did you do it though and he's like oh i mean like oh well like um i mean i didn't do it but, like, she wanted it, so it's like, I mean, look, I mean, you know what they do. Yeah, I just did what I wanted. To. And I feel like that's how people talk right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, I might be mistaken, but I feel like it felt like the dialogue that people use right now. And it's like, he totally fucking did it. He totally did some shady shit, and he's trying to justify it. Um, and I think, like, again, that, that talks about, I think it's more modern, it's a more modern type of dialogue, and but he's a douchebag. And, and then throughout the movie, he's like, oh, I'm going to save this girl. Like, because he, he feels bad because he shot her. And he's like, oh, damn, I shot her. And maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come around as a good person and I'm going to help her. And then what does he do at the end? I mean, I think his, his first instinct is like, make sure that I'm okay first and then I'll help you. Because you could see that he is 
somewhat good. Because when he sees, like, the fucked up tapes in the basement, like, he acknowledges oh, that that's, that, good, that's yeah. very bad. You know, that's, you know, that that's not right. So And he'll call it out. He's like, dude, that's fucked up, you know? So I, I feel like the film plays with your emotion, like, a lot, specifically to his character. Because is he bad? Is he good? Like, you see both sides. Maybe, like, it's up to interpretation, right? Like, um, but, I mean, who knows, you know? Like, they don't say like indefinitely yeah i mean it's it's yeah it's up to you to like make your own uh like to to to, yeah make your own i guess observations and say that he is or he isn't but like you know there's a couple of things in that movie that just i think like it makes you think even after the movie's done you can go back and you can be like yo what happened with this and like yeah he sees the tapes where joe chill sorry i forgot your name um tortured or raped these these women and he has tapes and tapes of these so maybe justin long's character at that point maybe he's he realizes that he was a douche for raping this girl or maybe maybe uh on the opposite side of that he's like i'm not as big as a douche as this guy so there's that's completely two different ways to read that situation one justifies his actions and say i didn't do what he did and the other one is like maybe I'm a bad guy because I did this. Um, And, you know, that's crazy. And then, but at the end, when this monster is chasing him, after he shot the poor woman that's the protagonist in here, he leaves her. And then he runs away from her. And then he tells her, I can get away, but you need to slow her down. And he throws her off of a building. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Like, are you serious? He just throws her off of a building he said screw you i want to live and he just does the most douchey thing you can ever do um and then but like you and then reading into this movie in a different way i I was talking to amanda about this and she was telling me about like you know the most sympathetic character in this movie is actually the the monster because the monster was born from like someone who was raped and then that person never saw the light of day. That person was born into the labyrinth. And the only type of education this person has is from her rapist dad. Maybe not even like the mom. Maybe he killed the mom. There's cages in that labyrinth with food. So maybe she was stuck in the cage. But the only, the only other form of education was a parental video, which shows you how to be a mom. And what is she trying to do? She's trying to feed her kids, which is Justin Long and the female protagonist. For the, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Um, and she's not really bad by, yeah. by nature. Like she's just trying to protect her kids. Cause she thinks that these people living in the house are her kids. And the only other male person she knows is her dad who's a rapist. And she only tries to help the women. So that's insane. And, and you know, uh, when Justin Long's character goes to see, he goes to the end of the hallway and Joe Chill is, is in that, in that cellar. She's terrified. The monster is terrified of going down that cellar. It looks at like where Justin Long is going. It's like, I'm not going down there. This monster is like a seven, eight foot tall character, strong as hell. And she's terrified of a sickly old man in a bed just because of what she was raised on. That's insane. That is insane. And that's why, like, I don't know if you remember that I mentioned that I felt bad for the monster at the end. Because I felt like there was another way, because you did see the the human aspect in the monster when, you know, uh, she uh, the monster was caressing, you know, the, I guess, the, the actress. Yeah. And... Oh, baby. Right, and then she spoke, and obviously she ended up fucking dying, so... Yeah, I mean, the protagonist even says, like, I'm sorry, and then she shoots her in the head. But it, it's just, like, there's so many mental disorders that this monster has, unfortunately. You know, like, it's insane. It's it's terrible that... And, and I think we spoke about this before. I, I know I mentioned it's Christian, but the homeless man says something in there. It's like, he says when, when he oh, yeah. helps a girl, he's like, that's not even the worst thing in there. What the hell is the worst thing in there, then? And it could be that he was talking about Joe Chill's character. Yeah. But... Uh, I mean, that's what Amanda also said. Is my, maybe if he's talking about Joe Chill. But what I told her was like, I don't think so. Because 
that guy, the homeless person said he just started living there like five years ago. So if he started living there like five years ago or 15 years ago or something, Joe Chill was in that cellar because Justin Long owned that house. So I don't even think he knows about that person living there. So what else is in that labyrinth? What else did he see? Because Joe Chill looked like he was too old to even like get up and walk out. So how does he know what else is in there? Something must be going out at night. Yeah. Besides that lady. I mean, they only showed us a glimpse of like the, the stuff that they could have done or they, they actually did. I mean, I'm sure this guy has more people down there and That's helping insane. out or doing stuff than it's supposed to be. Doing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, was there... sign up to I sign up to co with the city. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that we'll we'll take a little break. And we are back. Um, so I guess that's barbarian in a giant nutshell. Um, so we talked about barbarian, Halloween ends. Did you want to talk about Black Adam or Black Panther or anything else? Uh, sure. We talk about Black Adam. All right, so Black Adam. It's, I don't know, what, like the 6th or 7th DCEU movie. Um, where would you rank it in the DCEU? Uh, worth a watch? Or not worth a watch? Good movie? Overall? What would you think about it? First thought, initial thoughts. Uh, straight off the bat, I feel like it's a must watch, especially if you're, you're already committed to the rest of the DC movies. Um, I feel like this one is uh one of the best ones um uh, for sure i feel like it was really well done um uh, overall how about you yeah i so again i i think i think i was talking trash in the last podcast about black adam because i'm i always i don't i'm i'm tired of the rock i i want like i'm tired of the rock he always wears his tan shirt and tan pants in every single one of them you couldn't tell which set he's on because he's always the same person <laughs> um and I, I hated that and I didn't want him to bring that to this movie. And I think he's grounded in here. Like I think not grounded as like I mean he's an OP superhero, but he seems a lot more less the rock and just like, oh he's actually acting here. He's actually someone else and he's not just who he is and welcome to the jungle or whatever the, the heck he's in. Um I enjoyed him in here. I thought I thought he was drawn back a little bit. I thought it was a good movie. There's a lot of action. I think the JSA is goddamn incredible in here. I, uh, I seeing Doctor Fate on screen is awesome. Seeing Hawkman on screen is awesome. Cyclone. I know you said you didn't care for her too much, but I think I think that's such a hard character to get on screen, and I think they got it right. Um, and then Adam Smasher, I had a good time. I think his suit looks awesome. I think he looked awesome. He's funny. He smacks Hawkman, which is great. They have that little, you and me, you and me, and I don't want to mess with Hawkman. <laughs> I'm sure Adam Smasher were just as scared. But I think Black Adam plays like a, an Iron Giant movie where the kid shows Black Adam a little bit more humanity. Um, and it he like brings him, reigns him in as like a more of an anti-hero or whatever. Um, I have a couple of issues with the movie, but nothing glaring. Um... I think it's one of the better DCEU movies for sure. Uh, I think it's top tier in those ones. I mean, I, I put like Aquaman in there. I put Shazam in there and the Suicide Squad as probably the best DCEU movies. Um, and I think it's probably better than all of them. Um, they could have cut off like the first whole half of that movie though. That, that whole like origin story. I think they could have knocked that out. Really? Um, yeah. And, and just explained it a little bit they could have started that movie in the caves with them finding black adam i didn't need any of that initial um flashbacks and i didn't need any of the of them heading towards the mountain uh to the mountains of Kandak. i i mean the movie is two hours and something you know it's 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 long it's a long movie they could have shortened it and then the main the character the main antagonist I had problems with him just being super CGI. Uh, he kind of comes out of nowhere and he's just super CGI. Like I, they should have got, you know what they should have gotten is uh, what's his name from from WWE, uh, the Great Khali. Is that his name? 
get a fucking eight foot motherfucker over here yeah. and just have him beating the shit out of the rock. I mean, and they're both WWE superstars. Like, it would have been awesome. I would have yeah, loved to say that. I, yeah, I think that would have been great. Um, but, yeah, okay. So, I mean, I guess that's what I thought. Any standouts? Uh, um, so, I know you said that you would cut off, like, that the flashbacks of, like, um, what was that? His hometown? Condog. Uh, Condog. I feel like that was, written, like, it was awesome to see uh, because you really understand where, like, the anger stems from and just how shitty stuff was like back then you know because i feel like this whole movie is very different from um i mean even if you want to compare like superman right like metropolis metropolis if you think about it or as you know it like it's a very nice city a very nice established society everything's very clean and when shit hits the wall it's because of aliens or some just some bad guys right but Mm -hmm. overall it's a very polished city yeah here it's like this is fucking huts built from mud we're talking about people getting whipped, you know, people killing each other, like barbarians, like savages, right? Mm-hmm. Before civilization, right? And it's it's awesome to see uh, that, you know, Black Adam comes from that time uh, and tries to reestablish himself into, I mean, very in the very beginning, just like trying to figure out what society has turned into, you know? Uh, which also makes it really fun because you'll see like he doesn't, know what a TV is, uh, he doesn't know, like, a lot of things, um, and then, like, you, like, the point that you said about, um, the kid and him having that relationship, like, the Iron Giant, trying to teach him because he doesn't know, he's not from that time period, uh, is awesome, and I feel like the, the flashbacks definitely contributed to that, uh, aspect of the movie. I think they could have put that in there, I just think it could have been integrated better instead of just throwing it in the like it just seems like there's a whole chunk of like 20 minutes in the beginning and then we find the characters and then we see the characters going to the mountains and then black adam comes out like i think they could have just started it at the mountains then finding black adam and then maybe later um when black adam's knocked out because he gets hit by the i forgot what it's called but the the eternus like missile or whatever Mm -hmm. and he's knocked out in the room i think the mom could have just told osiris or uh, the kid like, hey, uh, like maybe tell him a story of who, who Black Adam was. And then that way you can integrate that part at the beginning, but make it more, um, I guess just make it make sense more. Because it just feels like, oh, here's a whole 15 minutes. Now here's the movie, the actual movie. I just think like you could have integrated it more into the movie. It would, it would have just made the movie flow better than just like, here's a part of the beginning. And now here's the movie. I just think that's just, it just wasn't done that well. Um, I don't need that, I think. Like, I need that later. I need it to make sense. I need it more allegorical. I need it to just flow better. Um, but again, it's just nitpicking. I mean, I, I, overall, I think it's, I, I, I enjoyed it overall. I mean, I, Hawkman was badass. Dr. Fate was badass. I mean, seeing the JSA on screen is just cool. Uh, seeing these characters that people don't know about, really, in the DC is cool. Like, and, you know, you, you ask some, I think you, you ask like nine out of 10 people um, in, on the street, they'll say they know who Dr. Strange is, but they don't know who Dr. Fate is. And Dr. Fate can rock Dr. Strange any way, which way, from here to the end of time, in any timeline, over and over again. Because Dr. Fate's just a beast. So right. seeing him here is like, he's awesome. And he, Pierce Brosnan plays that part to perfection. He's, Pierce Brosnan is a G. Um, I, I enjoy, yeah, I enjoyed his, his dynamic with Hawkman is also really good. Like I, I got kind of emotional where Hawkman's like, well, I'm going to die. You should have told me, ah, well, it's cool. And like, he's, he's walking towards his death. Hawkman is walking towards his death, knowing like, I'm not surviving this. And then Dr. Fate makes that barrier. It's like, I, I might be like, I might've seen you die, but I don't want to, I don't want to see you die. I like, I'm a. Well, I'm a, what was it, an emotional old man and I don't want to see my friend die. And he makes a barrier to save Hawkman. And Hawkman's like, don't you do this, Fate! And he's just knocking the hell out of that barrier because he doesn't want to see his friend die. I think that's a great dynamic. Like, they seem like best friends. That's how you know that they made really good characters because usually you need, like, a backstory for each individual character or even previous movies of each character to develop 
you know, some kind of like attraction towards these characters or some sentiment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some emotional ties, you know, to that to those individuals. But here they just like start off running and it's like, dude, these guys are amazing, you know, they're badass. Yeah. Like I don't need to know too much of them or, you know, know them at all. And like I already love them and you know, you know, like you said, you got sentimental about like you don't want this person to die and it's I've only known them for this movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's 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 how you know it's really well done, so I mean, yeah, I, I think it has so many great scenes. I mean, I, I love seeing Hawkman go toe-to-toe with Black Adam. Even though if he can't win that fight, like, I, it's cool to see. Hawkman doesn't give up. Like, he's going to fight you till the end. Like, he doesn't care. That's awesome. Um, I, one of my favorite scenes in there, too, was where uh, Black Adam got, like, hit by, I don't know what the heck, the Savak or whatever, the, the demon bad guy. And then that guy's like, you're not a hero. And then he's like, I'm not. But he is. And then you just see Hawkman yeah. stab the hell out of him. And then he turns around and stabs Hawkman. And you're like, oh, God, they killed Hawkman. But then you see Hawkman come out with Dr. Fate's helmet. Yep. The glowing eyes on that helmet yeah. come out. It's like, an old friend taught me this trick. And you see all those Hawkmen come in and just swarm them. That's awesome, bro. That was bad ass. That was very cool. Very cool. As, it has some great action sequences. Maybe too many, but... It's still fun. Like, it's a fun ride. Um, they also didn't need to play that Painted Black song. That thing was garbage. For real? <laughs> yeah, I don't think... They played a song right before then, and then they played Painted Black. It's like, it doesn't go with this character. Painted Black? That's not him. Was like, it the one where, like, the brother was singing it repeatedly throughout the movie? The... Do you remember? I, I don't know how, uh, what song it was, but it was pretty funny because he was like lip singing to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. The, was it Baby Come Back? Baby Come Back? I don't know. Maybe something like that. I, I don't know. That was, that, was, that was fun. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. I, it was a fun time. I actually enjoyed The Rock in here. I thought he did a great job. Um, there, again, there's some like just nitpicky stuff about it, but I, I, think, it's a, I think if you like DC, uh, hell, if you just like... If you like the Iron Giant, or if you like, um, like superhero movie, I think it's a really good superhero movie. Um, I think it's one of the best superhero movies, like, or one of the most fun superhero movies I've seen in a long time. Uh, there, I mean, Marvel's come up with a bunch of uh, superhero movies and stuff and shows, but I don't think any of them have been as fun as Black Adam has in a while. Right. Uh, and I mean, I I love like like the adult version that you get too. From Black Adam because it's very serious it's like it doesn't hold back um, he's just getting rid of people left and right which is always awesome to see so I feel like it, it would have changed the movie I think drastically if you know if yeah it didn't show that version of Black Adam yeah because if it was a Marvel movie they wouldn't kill anyone and then they'd make a joke every five seconds <laughs> right but okay yeah it's fun all around so yeah, a good movie, recommendable. Um, I give it, I give it like an eight out of ten. Um, I watched it twice, so I like it was it was good enough for me to watch twice. And again, I I haven't been the biggest supporter of The Rock in recent years, so I mean I don't know if that's saying a lot. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, I will say, don't watch anything Ezra Miller makes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not a supporter of that. And if you are, then stop listening to this podcast. But. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, anything else for Black Adam, or anything we covered at all? Yeah, I feel like you definitely need to give it a watch. Um, I only watched it once, I give it a 9. Um, there are, the only thing that, uh, that I had mentioned before is that, um, I, I didn't like, um, Smasher and, um, what was her name? Cyclone. Cyclone. I feel like the whole movie was really serious. Um, besides like the, the very small uh, jokes that were thrown around but I feel like those were like very kiddie but I see like why they did it but I feel like if they had made those characters very serious um, it would have been much more enjoyable so yeah that's interesting because to be honest I didn't know when this movie was going to take place like timeline wise and then on top of that i didn't know which heroes they were going to use as in like 
I thought this was going to be the old school Lab Smasher from like the JSA, like the old school JSA. Um, and I forgot that Cyclone was in it. I, I, I remember that there was going to be like a tornado person in there, but I thought it was going to be Red Tornado. Um, and I was kind of expecting them, a Red Tornado and like the old school Adam Smasher. And we got like the new kids, um, their, their legacy characters, which is, I mean, I think that's cool. Legacy characters, again, is, is something that DC has that Marvel really doesn't have. Uh, like there's always someone to take up the reins, I think, in DC. There's always like some kids or some spiritual successors that come out. Marvel kind of has that, but I mean, I know you don't care for like Ironheart. Like she's supposed to be the spiritual successor to like Iron Man and Falcon is supposed to be like, you know, the next Captain America. But I don't think they do it as well as Bat or as uh, well as like DC does. Yeah, definitely not. I feel like it's very forced and it's not as, it's not as cool as the originals, you know, like at least DC is kind of like, okay, I can work with this, you know? Yeah, I, I think they, they make their characters so unique that you're cool with it like batman he has so many spiritual successors and i'm cool with all of them i mean dick grayson nightwing yeah i'm cool with that jason todd red hood i'm cool with that tim drake red robin cool with that like all batgirl i mean they're all great they're all great um superman even has superboy i mean steel to some extent um and he, then he has his sons and like he has there's so many spiritual successors that you can use in dc that just marvel doesn't when you think of Marvel, you think of Steve Rogers. You think of Tony Stark. You think of uh, Thor Odinson. You don't think of their legacy characters. Right. You, you don't think of any of them. You, and it's, I mean, it sucks. It sucks to say, but it, it's just because Marvel's always focused on their original people. Like, this phase, I don't know, is this phase six, phase four? I don't know. But I don't think anyone's terribly excited about any of these characters. Um, I... I mean, I can't even think of anyone that's like that got replaced, and I'm like, yeah, this is this was a great replacement, or I'm super excited to see how this character grows in future movies. Yeah, I, I don't think, yeah. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, it yeah, it, it sucks that it sucks. <laughs> um, well, with that being said, I mean that that transitions nicely to did you like Black Panther? What kind of forever? Oh, def I, I definitely liked it more than the first one. Um, there was a um, tie, a more emotional tie to um, the passing of Chad um, Boswick. Is that Chadwick Boseman, yeah. Boseman. Um, so I feel like that contributed to me liking this one more. Um, but it, it was awesome. Like you, just, you could just see like the culture that they made. Uh, from Wakanda, um, and then the action scenes were great. Again, Ironheart, I felt like that could have been its own thing, and it, it definitely felt forced, but um, from what I remember, everything else was pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> even like the, the bad guy, not really that much of a bad guy, but um, Namor, Neymar, uh, he was awesome, he was super cool. Um, I think everybody else I really like too. Everyone from the tribes, uh, the mom, the Black Panther. Okay, so I did have a complaint. The Black Panther, um, Churi, I felt like she could have stayed the same character as a, like a brilliant scientist that yeah. is like in the back of the scenes um, as a very powerful role model or as a woman. Which is awesome, you know? Um, but I felt like a better Black Panther would have been... Um, Okoye. Right. Yeah. I felt like she was... She, she feels more of a field agent. Well, she was more of a field agent, definitely. And she just gives off that vibe, you know? Um, so I feel like that was a missed opportunity. Or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I, I agree. I think it is a definite missed opportunity. Because Okoye, you build... She's, her character's been built like from the previous movies and installments and she seems like she's toe to toe with Chadwick Boseman like she goes tit for tat yeah. she talks to him and like not she doesn't like I mean yeah that's her like king but she talks to him like a brother and sister would talk you know like even in the first Black Panther was like 
you froze. You know, like, I never freeze. And he's like, he froze. You know, like, she plays with them. And he's someone, she's someone that you can trust full heartedly. You know, she's going to get things done. She's a warrior. She's a teammate. She's going to do what's right. And she always does what's right. And that's what, like, it's, she's great. Uh, she's fantastic. And she should have, I think she should have been the next Black Panther. Um, and then they turn her into, what, the Midnight Warrior or something? And she has, like, that fish Oh, so, I was confused. I thought you were talking about... Oh, Lupita Nyong'o? Right, the wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wife. would like to see the wife. Oh, because she okay. was a field agent. I mean, they were both were... Uh, one's more military and the other one's more, like, espionage Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. Um, I would like to see the more... Uh, Lupita Nyong'o. Oh, that, that'd be interesting. I'd be interested in that. She's awesome. So. Yeah, she's great. She's, she's, she's a great actress. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I like the movie... I again. I don't know if they know how to do fight scenes in Marvel. I think the fight scenes all sucked, um, especially that fight scene at the end with Namor versus Shuri. I think that fight scene was garbage. Um, yeah, it, it was. I don't like. I I enjoyed the one where they were on the bridge. I thought that was awesome. Oh yeah, that one because it was slowed down. It was like yeah. you just saw the action coming out. It was it was good. It I was think that was the best one actually. Yeah, that was the best fight in that movie for sure. I agree, um, but. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't think they know how to do fight scenes. Um, that fight scene at the end was terrible. It was like five minutes long, and it didn't feel like anything. Um, it was really weak. Um, movie's pretty long. That I, I don't know if I'd watch it again. If I did, if I will, would watch it again, it's going to take me a while. Cause it, it's a long movie. Um, I mean, Black Adam was also a long movie, but it feels like it goes by faster. Um I liked it though. I uh, which one called made it? Made it. Ryan Coogler uh, did Creed, Fruitvale Station, the first Black Panther. I don't think he knows how to make that movie. I I think he no matter what maybe you might not like think it's outstanding, but he always makes a good flick. Um, Black Panther one was fun. I mean, I have some complaints about like that last fight scene was pretty bad, um, but overall it's a good time. I think Black Panther two the the the, the worst thing about it and it's no one's fault is. Chadwick Boseman passed away, and I think you feel that loss. Like he's such an energetic, awesome actor that he's he's just badass everywhere he goes. Yeah. And Black Panther, he's so much fun. He's cool. Like he just oozes badassery. And then even in um, what is it? In Infinity War, like grab this man a shield. Badass. This guy is a yeah. boss, bro. In Civil War, when he's chasing down Bucky. Like, he's awesome. And, like, Clint is like, you know who I am? I don't need to know your name. Like, he's a beast. Chadwick Boseman's badass. And no one can fill his shoes. And you feel that loss. Like, I was watching this. I like, I like love M'Baku a lot. I think he's great. I think Namor was good. Which, again, Namor sucks in, like, the comics. Like, he's a douche. He's just a bad character, I think. And they made him cool. They made him yeah. interesting. Giving him that Mayan, Aztec, like, culture... Um, that makes him way cooler, yeah. I think. Um, he's the first mutant. That's awesome. Bring on the mutants already. I mean, we want X-Men. Um, but they made Namor cool. And I dig it. Um, I mean, again, Ryan Cooler's badass. I don't know if it was his idea to do it, but that's a great decision. Um, but yeah, I think I really feel the loss of Chadwick Boseman here. Uh, and spoiler alert, but Michael B. Jordan's in this movie. He's pretty badass, too. Yeah, he's cool. I can watch. I think he's been in every Ryan Coogler movie ever made. That dude's badass. Michael B. Jordan's cool yeah. shit. Where Wallace at? Hey, yo, where Wallace where at, Wallace straight? At? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's cool. Um, yeah. Chad was perfectly uh, put in that role. You know, like you said, nobody could replace him. So. Yeah, I mean... It, I, I, me and my brother were talking about this because we were talking about, like, who would lead the Avengers? You know, because Iron Man is, like, well, he's done. Uh, Captain America walked away, and then Thor's... I don't know what they're doing with Thor, but... Yeah, whatever. Um, that guy turned fat and then came out in terrible movies. Um, or the, the, this last one was terrible. God. Um, but who would lead the Avengers after them three? Like, there's no one who could lead the Avengers, and... The only one that would have filled those shoes perfectly would have been Chadwick Boseman. I could see Black Panther leading the Avengers, no doubt. 
I don't see anyone else leading the Avengers. Like the only one they have right now that can lead them, and I don't like the idea of him leading them, is Doctor Strange. But I don't see who else would lead them because everyone else is new and they're it's inexperienced. Young. Yeah, exactly. So it's like who who are the Avengers? I don't I don't even know who like. That is a really good question because. And we don't even have like movies for any of these characters, right? I mean. Who would be the next Avengers? Probably like Miss Marvel, um, the new Miss Marvel, uh, Photon, I guess, uh, Rambo, or yeah, Rambo. Brie Larson could lead the Avengers. <laughs> <sighs> Man, Brie Larson. God. She, I think she's the most, un- they, they, they like consider her the most unlikable Avenger, or the most unlikable Marvel character, uh, which sucks, but I, mean, yeah. I don't know. She did. I think it's because she kind of came out of nowhere and she's like, I'm the toughest person in the world. And it's like, you didn't earn this. It's not earned. It's, everybody else went through hell to like become the Unavenger. You kind of just, meh. You kind of just blew up somewhere and then. Right. Now you had one movie and you're the, apparently the strongest Avenger of all time. So, it, it, yeah. Uh, I like, think there's a lot of dead ends. Um. Uh... I feel like Marvel knows how to dig themselves out of a hole. And... I mean, they, they, they pump out stuff and people watch it. I mean, they're, they're not, like, at a loss. They know everybody's going to watch whatever they, they pump out. Right. They have a formula and it works, for sure. But I mean, for uh, how long? <laughs> I mean, I feel like they can do... Well, I mean, yeah, they are scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't they? they brought, like, Moon Knight yeah, out, is. the Werewolf by Night. Like, What? <laughs> Who are these people? Yeah, they're running out of stuff. And the people they're bringing on board. I, I don't like the new Captain America. I like him as, as Falcon. He's cool. Um, she Hawk's alright. But she's not going to be like a hero. She's fine being her Ellie McBeal. Yeah, show. she's fine there. Um, I don't like what they've done to Hulk. That dude seems like he's getting smaller and smaller in everything he's in, and he's like, he's never. I don't think he's, he's not used like Savage Hulk. Yeah, he's, he's not useful if he's not Savage. I mean, yeah, sure, because he's super smart, but I mean, also Tony Stark was smart, and his successors are gonna be smart. Yeah, and I feel like, like you throw a rock in New York and you hit a genius. Right, uh-huh. but you need the Hulk because he's the Hulk, not Bruce Banner. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what. And he's we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, I don't know why we haven't gotten there yet. I mean, yeah, I, Doctor Strange is super smart, but he's more into the mystic arts than anything. He's not, his PhD ain't gonna solve anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, and then, like, you know what? When I was watching She Hulk, I thought, hey, you know, they might do World War Hulk because you see Hulk get in like the spaceship and he's going to Scar or Sakar or whatever, and it's like. Oh, dude, they're going to do World War Hulk. And then, how does that end? He brings his son. And his son just looks like a Chad. He just looks <laughs> like, like a dude. What? Yeah. I thought I'm going to show this super badass scene. Some crazy stuff. And then he just brings some... Yeah. It's the worst decision they could have made. <laughs> I, like, why did they do this? It's like, yeah, my son, guys. <laughs> By the way, this is my son. No one question. Hey, who's that behind you while we're all talking? God. <laughs> yeah, it, it just, it's bad. Um, and how long were you gone for? You know, like, you popped out of the sun in like two weeks? About two weeks. Maybe less. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming the sun was already grown up by then. I, I mean, I don't know how long ago Ragnarok takes place, but I'm assuming that's when he had a kid. It was during Ragnarok, but it... I don't know. I mean, it's... I don't know what Marvel's doing. I really don't know what they're... I mean, apparently they have a plan. They showed us their plan. Whoopi. I mean, I, I, Guardians 3 looks cool, I guess. But they're done after this. With Guardians? Right. Or, I mean, may, I, don't, I don't know. That's what they keep saying. I mean, I know James Gunn's done with it. He said he's done. He's Because he's, he's too busy being Kevin Feige for DC. Well, I think Dave Bautista was saying that... Oh, he doesn't want to do it anymore. It's because they don't give him anything to do. Well, I don't know if he doesn't want to do it anymore. I th- is that what he said? I think... Oh, well, I, I mean, I think he said that, like, I don't do enough. Like, there's no point in me being in here. So why would I want to keep coming out? 
Because he they do they side like the hell out of him. He doesn't do anything in any of the movies. He's supposed to be like the super strong one, but he doesn't even he's he's not stronger than the Hulk. He's not stronger than Brie Larson. Um, I, I want to make that clear. Brie Larson, he's... not Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's always super fun to watch. Like, cause I I I would see myself being Superman and somebody that's super useless, you know. But like, he's always cool to watch. Like, I, I love Dave Bautista. You know? yeah. But I mean, I love him too. I but I, yeah, I just don't. They don't give him enough to work with. I, and I think he just wants more. He wants he wants more story, which. I always thought, like, he's funny in the movies, and that's why he's kind of cool. Why is Gamora? You know, he's funny. Nothing would go over my head. I would catch it. He's cool. But, like, you, again, you, you look at his backstory, and what's his whole purpose? It's, I want to kill Thanos because he killed my family. He doesn't even get to really fight Thanos. He fights him in Infinity War. I don't think he does anything in Endgame. And he's such a comedy relief character that, like, you'd think you'd be more like Kratos from God of War being like, you killed my family, you know? But he's like, I'm funny. Ha, ha, ha. And nothing against Dave Bautista. I think Dave Bautista does what is written to perfection. I think he does a great job. But he needs more. He needs way more. And I feel like it's already too late to start on this story because it's like, it's Thanos done. is done. He's done, know? yeah. <laughs> it's, it's over. I mean, that's that's why like, there's nothing for him to do. Uh, which sucks, but yeah. Um, and there's that. I mean, the trailer. Did you see the trailer for Guardians Slayer? Yeah. Are you excited for it? Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, I, I think it looks good. I think it looks... I like their Christmas special. I thought their Christmas special was pretty good. I haven't watched it. I'm pretty excited about that one. Yeah, I thought it was fun. Um, it's sweet. It's a sweet Christmas story, too. Like, I think James Gunn... Uh, James Gunn is like... I think James Gunn's just knocking it out of the park here recently. I mean, I like the Suicide Squad movie. I really like Peacemaker. I, I think Peacemaker is one of the best superhero shows ever made. Uh, on any, like, medium. Like... DC or Marvel, and I think this uh, Christmas special was good. I didn't care for Guardians 2 that much, but I think James Gunn has been knocking it out of the park since um, The Suicide Squad. I started watching Peacemaker. Uh, I only got to like five episodes or four. That's pretty good. I mean, it's only like eight. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty legit. Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. Um... Uh, Anything else you're excited about, you know, movie wise or show wise or I mean game wise, we're excited about Callisto Protocol. Another thing about horror that's pretty exciting this year. All right, let's see what else. I mean, I'm again on the fence with like Avatar. I feel like it's been so long that the hype is like no longer there for me. At least, uh, it looks fine. I'm sure they'll do a great job, you know. But it's nothing like, hey, it's on my calendar. I need to go watch this. I'm sure I'll watch it or I'll get to it. But it's something like, I need, a, I need this now or sooner than later. Agreed. I, I, I didn't care for the first one. It took me like five years before I actually saw the first one. I think I'm also kind of over James Cameron. Because I feel like he's so pompous. Um, but he is the king of sequels. So maybe this movie is going to be back. the best. Yeah, for real. I mean, Terminator 2, Aliens. I mean, he... It took him this long, so it better be good. I, <laughs> apparently he's bringing everyone back to life. Sigourney Weaver's in here. What? She died. <laughs> Stephen Lang isn't here. He died. I don't know how it's bringing them back. But they're coming back. I mean, when I did see this trailer, I thought, like, hey, this looks good. I think it looks good. Yeah, I um, I don't care for the Pocahont- Pocahontas movie because that's what the first one was, was Pocahontas. But maybe, like, I, I think I have more faith in this one to be good than I, I did for the last one. I, I again I don't know what the hell this movie's about, but I think it looks good. Same. Um I I'm more down to watch this one than I was for the, when the first one came out. But yeah, all right, yeah, Avatar. Uh, I'm excited for that Transformers movie. I love Beast Wars. That's exciting to me. Indiana Jones 5's coming out. James Mangold's making it. The guy who did Logan, Walk the Line. So it should be That's good. Possible. I haven't seen the trailer but there's some CGI that looks bad, I think, on there because they try to make him look young, and some it, some parts look good, but there's this part where he's on the horse, and I think it looks disgusting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm it's indie. I mean, I love Indiana Jones. Um, all three of them, all three of them, not four. There, there was no four. Um, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I guess I don't know. That's it. And you have any closing thoughts? 
Uh, no, I think we're good. I think I said everything I wanted to say. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Aztec. Thank you, audience, for listening. If you are listening, if you're not listening, start listening. And um, stay away from Ezra Miller before he flashpoints us all. <laughs> Bye. This is...